the Nokia 7 Plus, one of the phones that HMD Globals just launched here in India. Now, I've been using this as my primary phone for the last two weeks, and this, I guess, is as good a time as any to come out with my experience with it, our full review. But before we get to that, if this is your first time here, or in case you just can't remember, my name's Ash, you're watching C4 Retech. Here's a card to our latest giveaway, I'll also leave a link in the description below. And while you're down there, make sure you hit that bell icon to turn on notifications. Let's now get to the video. The first thing to note here is the fact that this is HMD Global's first time with an 18x9 panel, and they've done quite alright. The bezels could have been smaller, but the mature Nokia branding up top, the 2.5D Gorilla Glass covering the panel, the accented metal running around the sides, the hidden antenna lines, the accents again around the camera and the fingerprint scanner, it's all quite tastefully done. The back especially deserves a mention, gone's the glass from the Nokia 7, replaced instead by metal coated with many layers of ceramic feeling paint. Now, I'm not gonna really call this ceramic feeling cause it doesn't really feel that way. It's more smudge prone but also offers better grip. I found this phone to be a nice mix of looks and ergonomics. HMD Global's walked a fine line and they've walked it well. Let's take a moment to talk about that display. It is a 6 inch 18 by 9 IPS LCD panel sporting a full HD plus resolution. The contrast is quite good, color reproduction is natural, the viewing angles are excellent. Overall, this is quite a nice and bright panel for media consumption. Whether it's watching a movie or reading an ebook, it all felt nice on this display. Talking about media, the headphone jack is present and the audio output felt good. Sadly, I still miss the earpiece doubling as a stereo speaker. It was present on the Nokia 6 last year. I still don't understand why I take that step back. Anyway, the single speaker does sound quite good. I just can't help but wonder what could have been though. Anyway, at the heart of the 7 Plus is a Snapdragon 660 chip. This is coupled with 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of onboard storage. There is also support for memory expansion in the form of a hybrid slot. Now, the Snapdragon 660 chip is an excellent performer. It has 8 Cryo 260 cores. It's paired with an Adreno 512 GPU. It ensures the 7 Plus delivers when needed. Whether it was running heavy games or multitasking and jumping between a bunch of different apps, the 660 hardly broke a sweat. No heating, no throttling, just pure smooth performance. I really wish more brands used this underrated gem of a chip on their phones. So far, it's kind of weird that we've seen only three phones utilize it. The 7 Plus is actually the only one available in India. Any guesses on which the other two phones are? The ones that use the Snapdragon 660 don't cheat. Don't look it up. If you know, let us know in the comments below. Now, it's not just the 660. It's also the software inside that's quite good. Well, global variants of this phone come with stock Android under the Android One program. This unit was imported from China. And surprisingly, it ran a close to stock interface too. We've not seen that usually. Now, I've already told you how the 7 Plus has no issues with heavy usage, so it shouldn't come as a surprise to you that it handles day-to-day -day tasks with ease too. Given the stock Android Oreo, the experience here is great. One of my favorite Nokia tweaks was the gestures that let you remove the navigation bar, just swipe from where the keys would be to get that action performed. Even quick switch worked. It isn't too complex, it's actually a very simple idea, but it does feel innovative and quite useful too. By the way, you can also reorder the keys if you don't like the Android way, if you wanna go the Samsung way, it works. I'm not sure if this feature would make its way over to the Android one variant of the phone, but I feel it should. Now the 660 is not good just for performance. It also happens to be built on the 14 nanometer FinFET process. So it's quite power efficient. Coupled with the 3800 milliamp hour battery inside, the battery life was excellent. I was able to get to almost the end of my second day with moderate usage. One day of heavy usage is definitely not an issue. Even on the day where I was extensively testing the camera, listening to an audiobook for a few hours over Bluetooth and playing some games, I still ended the day with a fair bit of charge left. HMD Global's tagline for the 7 Plus is a phone you can rely on. And I agree, especially when it comes to battery. You know, I just said I was intensively testing the cameras, right? 
So let's talk about those tests, the results. Now there are two cameras to the back of the 7 Plus. The primary camera is a 12 megapixel sensor. The lens has an f1.75 aperture. The secondary camera uses a 13 megapixel sensor and a telephoto lens with an f2.6 aperture. Both cameras, in fact, all three cameras on this phone have Zeiss branding. It is worth mentioning that the cameras do lack optical image stabilization. As you can see, under well-lit conditions, the camera is impressed. The primary sensor was great, loads of detail, the color reproduction felt natural too. While my impression was mostly positive, there are two caveats worth mentioning. One, the dynamic range felt a little underwhelming. Two, there's a bit of over-sharpening with the zoomed-in shots. Both aren't big enough issues to affect the experience, but then again, just wanted you wanted to let you guys know. Under low light, the images still look reasonably good. The wide aperture does help a lot here. Yes, there is a dip in quality, but that was expected, and I definitely call the results satisfactory. And the presence of a full-fledged manual mode also helps fine-tune the shots. That said, occasionally you do end up with a shaky image even with the auto mode on since there is no optical image stabilization and the 7 plus by default tries to extend the shutter time to get the most light in and the best shot possible. Now talking about OIS, another area where its absence was felt was with video. This phone can shoot 4K videos at 30 frames per second. The quality is good but the footage isn't too stable cause no OIS. Again, note that the dynamic range could have been better, we've seen better in this segment itself. As far as selfie cameras go, we get 16 megapixel super crisp shots. There's a beauty mode included which lets you take 4 bokeh shots like this. Edge detection was better than I expected it to be. Well, no Pixel 2, the selfie camera on this phone did impress. Now with that, let's talk price. The Nokia 7 Plus was recently launched in China for 22.99 yuan. That converts to 23,500 rupees. And by the time you're watching this video, we should have the Indian pricing as well. So do check the description or the pinned comment for the same. Now, if this phone launches at the same price or lower in India, it would be a great deal. Fantastic bang for your buck. If it launches at say 25, 26,000, I'm gonna call it okay. But anything over 28, 27, 28, I'm gonna call it a stretch. So that's how I feel about the 7 Plus. It is probably HMD Global's strongest showing so far. They've nailed this one. I just hope they nail the pricing too. So that's it for my two cents on the 7 Plus. Do you agree with what I've had to say in this video? Let me know in the comments below. So now it is time I bid you adieu. If you hated the video, you know what to do, but if you did like it, go ahead, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, I'm Ash. This is C4E Tech. Goodbye and good night.